Okay, hello. Hi. So guys, we are waiting for your questions in the chat box. <laughs> there will be any questions. That's okay. Hello, everybody, um, and thanks for tuning in. It's it's wonderful to be part of the A-Type I online conference this year. Um, my name is Pauline Clancy, and I am a lecturer and PhD researcher based here in Belfast in Northern Ireland. The presentation that I'm delivering today explores the relationship between experimental typography and the book format. So it forms part of wider typographic research that I'm currently undertaking for my practice-based PhD. So this presentation will consist predominantly of examples of my ongoing series of process books. And I would like to begin by briefly setting the scene in terms of my, my wider research practice. So my research explores language and typography, specifically the materiality of language. So I'm looking at analog and digital approaches to working with typography and where perhaps they can come together in a hybrid space. So I'm working with different materials and processes. So for example, laser cutting, screen printing, and more recently exploring the possibilities of working with interactive screen printing. So materiality of language here relates to the medium or form by which language presents itself or that through which language is constructed. So it examines the visual and aesthetic qualities and importantly, it examines surface as a site of meaning production. So as part of this research, um, a series of process books are created and these process books stroke experimental typography books are something that I have been creating for many years. So since 2012, I've always enjoyed working with typography in an experimental way and very much working with materials and processes for creating and experimenting. So this approach led me to explore a little bit more behind the scenes in terms of language and typography and meaning and look a little bit um, into the area of uh, semiotics. So this was something I explored further while studying for my master's here at Ulster um, University in 2012. And this was a very important time for me because it was also um, the time when I learned how to screen print. And I quickly realized that um, screen printing and experimenting with typography worked really well together, but they formed this lovely sort of organic uh, relationship. So I was creating different uh, typography based screen prints for different projects I was working on. And from the screen printing process, I was accumulating a lot of um, a lot of newsprinted test sheets, so where you pull through a test on newsprint to make sure you're getting a clean print. So for many different reasons, including I suppose environmental and economic reasons, I was reusing these sheets by, by overprinting on them. There wasn't any particular intention um, uh, in mind when I was doing this, the, the focus was really on creating the, the good finished print, if you like. So for a few months, I was just collecting these newsprinted sheets and then I began to realise that there was something very interesting with them and that they were perhaps um, becoming a project in their own right. So I began to gather a number of these sheets together and then I started to curate them into spreads. Um, the sheets are then hand-bind to form a series of what I termed process books. So there's something sort of very accidental and of course elements of chance play a huge, huge part in these compositions. Um, and sometimes elements of letterpress um, also appear there. So this began, I suppose, a really a long-term interest and passion um, working with language typography, screen printing and, and the books. So again, these pages are test sheets from, from other prints um, and the content of all of these prints um, is always related to typography and language and writings and theory in, in relation to that. So the pages are, are hand stitched um, with a cover added and, and fixed and then the spreads are they are carefully curated from a design perspective. Um, so balancing color, shape, form, and scale. Strong consideration is given to how opposing pages can work together as, as a spread. So some are discrete and balanced, while others appear more disruptive, I suppose, and, and chaotic in a sense. So resembling a book of typographic errors, but also revealing that the handmade quality that they do have. 
because each each one is a is a one off piece. Um, there is no addition, and I suppose in many ways they can be considered artist books. So this is just a little um, a short animation. If it will play for for me, let's see. So it just gives you an idea, I suppose, of the, of the layouts and the different layouts in, in one book. And um, so working with language and typography in this way through the book format led me to, I suppose, look a little bit closer at the history um, and of the relationship between the book format and experimental type, typo typographic approaches. So you know, the very concept or idea of experimental typography or experimenting with typography is contrary to, to more traditional typographic layout approaches. And we are, of course, all familiar with, um, with Beatrice Ward and her seminal 1930 essay, The Crystal Goblet, or Printing Should Be Invisible, where Ward outlines an argument for a rational approach to, to working with typography where typography carries the intended message and meaning to the audience without any interference. But of course, typography can also be viewed through another lens, and that is where the materiality of language is revealed. So that is when language reflects back onto itself, enabling another meaning to form on the visual surface, where text can also be viewed as image. So in other words, where typography can communicate something other through its material form. So the importance of, of surface is, is also highlighted by, um, by French philosopher Gilles Deleuze in The Logic of Sense. And Deleuze discusses the materiality of language, or as he describes it, a wildness of language. So he states that this wildness or, or materiality is something that is revealed on the surface of language as an event. So the surface is the place where the performance of language occurs and, and all meaning is possible. So this opens language up to, to other readings or possible considerations, and in particular in, in the current context of how we might consider the importance of surface in a digital realm. Just wanted to briefly to include some sort of historical examples of experimental typography and the book format. Um, and an early example of visual experimentation that disrupted I suppose, notions of transparency um, in the language system in text and alluded to the materiality of language includes Lawrence Stern's novel, The Life and Opinions of Tristan Shandy. And that was in the mid um, 18th century. And here we have the, the interweaving of verbal and visual readings. It's also um, evident in the work of um, late 19th century, early 20th century artists and poets. So French symbolist poet Stéphane Mallarmé is considered to be an important forerunner in um, liberating the constraints of text visually. Um, irrational spacing and the white page provides a platform or a stage for language to perform, free of the duty to conduct rational communication revealing another space where another meaning resides and engages the viewer through the materiality, if you like, of the typographic form. Um, French philosopher Jean-Francois Lyotard, in his text, Discourse Figure, also examines the materiality of language. And for, for Lyotard, um, the figure is viewed as materiality, surface and aesthetic space. So Leotard's figure disrupts or interrupts discourse, appearing as a rogue element on the edge, disrupting notions of transparency so it's within the language system. So it is an altered way of thinking about language that is related to seeing language as opposed to text to be read. So for Leotard, this example of work from Malarmy captured the figure, or captured the essence of that figure. This example from uh, Marcel 
Fruiters is based on the, on the previous Palarmi's unconventional layout. So it's, an, it's a homage um, where Bruders pushed the layout further by replacing the text with thick black bars, almost in a redacted fashion. Um, and he also replaced the word on the title page from poem to image. So also alluding to the, that the printed word is replaced by an abstract image. And just finally, I wanted to include an example by El Lizitsky, um, who, who, of course, was a key figure in the Russian avant-garde movement. Um, and his work with poet um, uh, Vladimir Mayaski in For the Voice or Read Out Loud is a highly influential and iconic, where the dynamic typographic image formed from letterpress furniture, um, from, from letterpress furniture, creating new visual vocabularies that are simultaneously both functional and abstract. So Lizitsky's uh, dynamic typographic layouts are based on his manifesto, uh, typography of typography. So transcending the, the traditional idea of the book layout. And returning to my own practice and the, the process book series, as previously stated, the pages of the book are created through the printing and overprinting on the test sheets through uh, an instinctive, I would say instinctive and practical screen printing process. Um, this is not an original approach, an, an original approach. So um, what I've sort of learned through, through this research is the discovery that many artists have approached the creation of books or artist books in this way, utilizing what can be termed as set up sheets or, or test sheets. And one of those um, is, is Dieter Rott, who created many different artist books that experimented with and also challenged the, the book format. And this example here is the, the Copley book. And the Copley book is a book about the process of making a book. Um, so it contains letterpress, offset pages, can, Roth's doodles and notes to himself, instructions on printing, production and scale. So it is kind of like a, an eclectic ephemeral mix, if you like. Um, US writer Joanna Drucker, who has written um, about experimental typography and artist books in particular, states that Roth is the first artist to make books the major focus of his work and to engage with the book as an artwork, not as a publication or vehicle for literary or visual expression, but as a form in itself. And these are, there's another example uh, from Dieter Roth, and these are loose sheets printed on both sides. And these are enlargements taken from um, daily newspaper clippings in his Daily Mirror book series. UK writer um, Sheena Calvert, in her article Unbound, Beyond the Codex, the book as process experience event, notes that books contain experiences and not just facts. And so the book as process is something to be experienced. So books operate and reveal content over space and time and encounter material properties. So as Calvert states, here the making and the process is foregrounded and not just the final outcome. So the book can also be self-reflecting. And as we have seen with the example from Dieter Rott, the book about the process of making a book. And again, Joanna Drucker states that, but the book can also be a self-conscious record of its own production. It can simply examine itself as a proposition, one laden with specific ideas about the ways a book can embody an idea through its material form. So the idea of the book as an idea the self-reflexive creation, which are about being books of what a book can be as an idea in form. So a perspective on the conventional book as an object can denote a linear narrative beginning at the front of the book and making its way to the end at the back. These process books, um, however, can be viewed in a non-linear way and while they are all predominantly typographic based, there is no linear typographic narrative to be deciphered. Rather, they are, there is a visual unveiling, if you like, of type and form over time. There's isolated moments of content and context of, of moments and interactions. 
And due to the, the folded page aspect, the pages are, are folded and bound almost in a reverse French fold. Um, so each, each spread is linked and connected between the preceding and subsequent spread. The folded edges um, are at the fore edge and they are never cut off, they never cut off the prints. They are not a, a finite end in the way perhaps a cut edge might be considered. Sort of on the contrary, here the folded edges are connectors, so they lead from the preceding to the subsequent spread. But of course, there's still always an element of surprise to what will be encountered, if you like, on the, on the forthcoming spread. So these process books can be considered bilinear in that they allow for multiple entry points. Um, the pages are diverse, where the varying translucent properties of the ink enables or disables multiple typographic reactions. Um, Calvert further outlines, the self-referred book as process creates a new logic of representation, one which is not limited by the fixity of the material object of the book, but which plays in the paradoxical spaces of the non-representational immaterial attributes of the book as process and event. So the idea of the book as, um, as process and event can also be applied to more recent contemporary examples. Um, so spin adventures in typography captures moments of a creative process, a recording of typographic experiments and considerations. So as stated by Spin Design Studio, it's it's a visual record of creative interests and outputs, packed full of remixes and rearrangements. It's an invitation to engage with the possibilities of typographic form. Um, the first publication proved very successful for the studio, so they created a 2.0 version. And again, capturing the experiments and typographic um, tests, a process that might normally go unseen. So for them, it's exploring the unexplored and the capturing of typographic possibilities. Exploring and capturing possibilities um, with typography are the essence here. And in terms of my approach, it can be, it can be defined as discovery-led research. And it adopts the position of the um, practitioner researcher in line with uh, Donald Sean's reflective practitioner. So where researching is true action and reflecting in and on action. So that is thinking and responding in the process of doing or making. So Sean emphasizes personal knowledge, intuition or tacit knowledge, not only as valuable, but imperative to the reflective practitioner as it becomes knowing in action. So Sean further um, suggests that designing or making is a reflective conversation with the materials of a situation. So the immediacy and responsiveness intrinsic in this making approach critically opens up the work to inherent possibilities. So if we acknowledge this in, in the sense of new materialism, where there is where there is homage to workmanship and materials, where content can come out of the material itself and not just be communicated through it. Um, the texts utilised within these current books are from a number of sources relating to the context of the research, so typography, language, materiality and meaning. So in other words, the content is the context where language is reflecting and projecting in and to itself and its material condition. UK writer Phil Jones, in his 2011 article looking at and through the book, The Materiality of Message and Medium, examines materiality and meaning making. He observes that the book from a, he observes the book from a, a materialized and a dematerialized de perspective, um, both common perspectives for designers working with typography. So similar to what was mentioned earlier in relation to Beatrice Ward and the Crystal Goblet, the dematerialized perspective advocates that the medium, in this case, language, typography and screen printed ink, should be an invisible conduit of information. The dematerialized position is essentially a separation of message and medium. But from another viewpoint, Jones suggests suggests the materialized understanding of the book is situated on the notion that the material of which the book is made is meaningful in itself. 
it possesses inherent properties. And it's here that we can consider language not just as a medium, but also as a material. Furthermore, Jones states that the materiality um, of the book implies more than the material experience of typography alone. So the paper or substrate is of equal importance. And this oscillation um, of material substrate in these process books is, is also of significance where the inside pages are predominantly newsprint, um, which by its very nature is ephemeral. However, Utilising the newsprint in this way, curated into a range of spreads and handbagged into a book, the importance shifts from a material with a relatively low value to becoming a unique artefact. So as Jones outlines, it is the extent to which attention is directed to the activity of meaning making using material cues provided by the book that motivates materialised or dematerialised understandings. And finally, um, just, just finishing up, so since 2012, I have made 16 of these process books and I do hope to continue making them um, into the future. I suppose overall, in essence, you know, there's never any predetermined definitive visual outcomes um, intended for the newsprinted sheets, nor do I ever actually consider these as final and complete pieces, but rather they record the performance of, of language, of, of different moments and that, that occur through um, the performance of language, I suppose, and they document a making process um, right to write this research. And that's me. Thank you very much. Um, does any, I suppose anybody here have a similar process of working or working with making books or working with typography? Yeah, thanks Sandina. Um, Sandina says that um, she liked the way I included 18th century examples. Um, and of course, this is not a new way of working at all um, in exploring type and looking at the materiality of language. Um, it's, it's, it's been there, like we've seen, since the, the mid 18th century. So, and, um, <clears throat> and for me, what, was, uh, what I realized throughout the research, you know, even you know, having all these sort of test prints and 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 formulating a series of process books, that's not a new way of working either. Um, I discovered that, for example, Dieter Rott and many other artists um, utilize the same approach to, to make artist books. So I'm not sure if we um, if we can ever sort of um, create new ways of working. Well, perhaps we can with, with technology and stuff like that, but always there's, there's always sort of a, a circle or a uh, going, uh, a, re, a repeating of, of, of things as well. Um, sorry, I'm just going through the, the questions. Um, have you covered? I'm looking slightly at typewriter art and um, a little bit. I sort of probably won't look too much into the area and the same you know with obviously um concrete poetry and stuff like that so so definitely there i suppose it, in terms of a research approach there's there is a lot out there in terms of um concrete language and concrete poetry and sort of the wider um the wider space of um looking at language as a material for sure um, how did I start with the process books? Um, it started when I was I learned how to screen print. So I was when you screen print, you if you're creating a final print, and um, you run through lots of test prints on newsprint or some sort of other sort of cheap substrate. So and the idea is that you is to check that you're getting a clean print because then you obviously want to get a a good print 
on your on your good paper because you only get one one shot at it. Whereas if it, your, it's your paper is you know if it's not a good print, then it's you can't even perhaps use it. So the the newsprinted sheets occurred when I was sort of reusing them for different prints. So I wasn't I wasn't thinking about what I was printing. It was just getting a clean print. So um, I was gathering these prints for months because I have a reluctance to throw things away. And so I was I was gathering these these prints. And then it was just one day I was just I was just going through them and I thought, okay, hang on a second, there's actually something really interesting happening with them. They um there was just nice sort of um overprinting happening and sort of there was this kind of capturing of the other projects I, I was creating. And then it was from there I decided that I would um, I would try and make them into into a book, and that's that's where it happened. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> thanks thumbs up <laughs> um yeah so you know i have i suppose i have i have a number of them at the minute and i hope i think it's it's one of those things that kind of happen on the side so whatever i'm working on whatever i'm printing um these will always kind of happen alongside and they 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 make they make themselves on the side and then it, it gets to a moment where i have all these um news printed sheets together so i start to sort of um fold them and collate them and then sort of look at how the spreads might work together and then and then bind them into into the books. Thanks, Santina. Thank you very much. We don't have more questions. Yeah, sure. I can move into the hangout space. OK, thanks. Thanks a million, everybody, for um, taking the time to um, to view my presentation this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Miriam. Bye now.